What about Anthony Joshua? Would you be willing to fight Anthony Joshua in the box? I'm willing to he fight. He said he'd knock you out. He, I mean, that's what he, he said. said he, he said he'd knock you out. Well, but, but even Tyson Fury said the same thing, and Tyson Fury is better than Anthony Joshua. So what do I care about what people say? You heard that, Anthony? He said, you heard what he said? He said Tyson Fury is better than you. He beat Tyson Fury. It's boxing we're talking about. About the fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. If you don't know, Anthony Joshua is originally from Nigeria, now British based and um, raised and probably claimed <laughs> by Britain. Um, but we need to do better. I mean, in Africa, Nigeria needs to do better and then celebrate our own. And um, yeah, he tried to identify with Nigeria, came back home one time and um, you know, everybody celebrated him and then forgot about him. Like, there wasn't that national backing. Okay, so he's still shouting, he's, he's celebrating Britain. Um, but I know if we showed him love, uh, if Nigeria shows him enough love, he will be more than glad to fall back. And, um, yeah, but Cameroon, Francis Ngano, he's, he has a lovely story. A lot of people backed him up to win after his display with Tyson Fury. Um, and it was hard for me and most Africans to take sides because this is somebody, these are two people we love. For me, I'm like, look, these are my people, you know. You realize AJ and his family come from the same town that we come from. What, the bull? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And AJ has always been cool. Me and them, we're cool. And me and uh, Francis, that's my brother as well. Yeah. I love this for these guys, you know why? Because they both win. They're both gonna get paid ridiculous amount of money. And Anthony Joshua, particularly, he has another story that is really captivating, that's really touching because he had this drive. He's been the only heavyweight for the longest that have been dreaming about this, um, about unifying the division and uh, becoming undisputed. And he went and collected some belts. And at the end of the day, somebody got, you know, um, caught trying to get, um, you know, cheat, taking some PDs, um, drugs enhancement. And he was disqualified, and the replacement came, and that replacement won, defeated Joshua, and stopped him on that journey. Joshua trained, and a couple of months later, he re, he um, re, uh, fought the guy and won, and came back. And Usyk came in, second second disaster, came in and won Joshua back to back twice, both for the original fight and the rematch. Simply because, in my opinion, Joshua was fighting his fight. He was trying to outbox uh, the boxer. So, what did we learn? Now, Joshua got through his journey, fought um, a, a lot more, trained himself, and with the eyes on the prize, he tried to get into in with Tyson Fury because that's, that was the only way he could prove his work. And Tyson was playing around and wouldn't allow him. So I think he decided to go on this journey, um, knowing he doesn't have much time left, go after the people that Tyson Fury uh, fought. And if, they, if it happens that he can do better, then automatically people's minds will go, people's minds will go, they should meet. They really should meet. Don't just assume that because you beat this guy that he beat or you beat this guy that beat Joshua, then you are better than him. You guys should actually fight. So um, he's been fighting to get back in the conversation. And the fact that Tyson Fury is going to have a two rematch, like a uh, rematch after this one is like, Joshua was like so passionate when he said, he might never be champion. But you see, I think God is setting things up for Joshua. 
at the point it looked like he was being set up for Ngano. Okay, because his story was so awesome. You know, you guys know the story from Cameroon. By road, get to Nigeria, get to Niger, and cross over to um, Spain and then to Paris. What I see is that two destinies are being fulfilled. That of Joshua's journey that he thought was up and it was almost giving up. But you see, when you dream the original dream, it doesn't die, even when you start to doubt. That's how real dreams are. And for me now, looking to um, the future for, for Joshua, it looks like he's already got the belt. Like, if he missed Tyson or Usyk this time, he might just be the winner. And then everything, you know, it's like... If he wins now, it would be a bigger celebration than if he had won originally some years ago. So I think everything has been set up. He's become a better boxer, more experienced, more calculated, risk taker, and overall a good balance of um, pressure and defense, or offense and defense. Which I think, if he wants to stay boxing more than five years, he might be able to stay undefeated, in my opinion. So, I'm saying that Joshua is a lot better than we think. He wants to be three times um, uh, heavyweight champion of the world and become um, undisputed. You know, now he has the shot. This guy is just going to come from nowhere and once again distort his plan and just change everything. It doesn't make sense, you know. How much? How often can a man go up and down? And this is somebody's end of career. If, if he's won, somebody, people could just give up on him. This is what we celebrate, Africa on the map. Ngannou versus AJ. Nigeria versus Cameroon. And Nigeria won, uh, which is Africa won, you know. And uh, I love that Joshua called on the Cameroonians who came to support your brother. And he said, you know, let's celebrate together. He gave them props, recognized them, and told Francis, keep going, you know. There was love. There's maturity. Let me know your reactions. And I'll be watching out to see what you guys say. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.